Holly Cotton here, and you guys know, especially now with my new book series, how important anything that has to do with adolescents and young adults are to me. I'm a huge, huge, huge mental health advocate. I love that we are all trying to bridge the gap for this up and coming generation. So I'm so excited to introduce you guys to our guest today. Renault Drake Sanders is the founder and brand evangelist of School Economy Incorporated. I love that it said brand evangelist because that makes it sound real fancy. I love that. I love that. So Renault is going to come in. He's going to talk to us about what his mission is. He's going to talk to us about the program, give us some insight on that, how he came up with this idea, his uh, history as an entrepreneur, all that great stuff. So welcome, Renault. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. So before we go into all about whenever we're talking about all the details that come with school economy, I want to kind of rewind because there was a pro progress process process. There was a process for you entering in the entrepreneurial world and then how you came across this. So kind of tell us about that because obviously you have to have some type of of, of history <laughs> to be dealing with uh, school economy because you, you gotta, you gotta want to deal with kids in the first place. So I know there has to be some kind of teaching or something that pulled at you to start this field. So kind of rewind and give us your entrepreneurial journey and how you ended up here with school economy. Okay. So when I was in high school, I was only focused on sports. I only wanted to go to the NBA like many of my other um, students right now. I was on that same path. But when I graduated, I had an option between choosing from a smaller school for an athletic scholarship or going to Kennesaw State University. And I ended up going to Kennesaw State there. Um, it was only a student, so it was brand new for me. And from being thrown into that situation, I kind of became an entrepreneur just naturally. So I was doing graduation photos and doing websites for companies in the area and things like that. Uh, at a certain point in time, I got a part-time job, of course. And at that point, I realized, hey, you know, this actually does take away from the studying element. So about five years ago, I thought about let's find a way to reward students with cash for the work that they do in the classroom. So I mustered on the idea for a few years, uh, end up managing at LA Fitness. And as general manager there, I was really able to get my hands on, you know, managing the team as well as sales. And from there, communicating with teachers, educators, as well as the students that would come to the gym, showed me that the opportunity was there for a Blue Ocean product to reward students and keep them motivated in the classroom. So in October of 2022, I decided to pursue the vision of building a rewards platform to keep students motivated and engaged. So I would say I've been an entrepreneur from the beginning, but everything just led me here. You know, I wanted to make a bigger impact. Yeah, and I think that that's pretty much how everyone who defines being an entrepreneur is or anyone that starts living in their passion. They're like, wow, it just seems like I kept getting pushed in this direction. Everything kept making me reroute here. So whenever you are where you're supposed to be, you start feeling like everything is gravitating towards you and now you're getting support. So I love that. I love that. Okay, so. Tell us, because I want to know how this works. One, I'm mad because I don't have any school-aged children because I sure would definitely be using your program. Right. But two, give us exactly. So School Economy, I know a little bit about it. It's a program. I know that you also have an app, and it's for what what grade? I'm not, yeah, what grade children is it? Or I don't hate to say children because, you know, when you're in 12th grade, you don't want anyone to call you a child. But School right. economy, what grade levels is it basically focused on? And then what exactly does it do? So our primary user base is between age 13 and 18, but we service students first grade through college. 
So I think our youngest user right now is about six years old and our oldest user is in his thirties, but he's, he's pursuing another degree. Um, so everybody throughout their educational journey, we serve straight through. So, so, okay. So I'm here, I'm a teacher in, in a school right now. I'm listening to Holly Cotton conversations and I'm like, Hey, school economy, that sounds like something I need to have in my classroom. So what is the process? What are the steps and what is it that is beneficial for me? If I am using school economy as someone that's in the school district. So the steps to get started with us, um, we're actually shortening the curve. So initially we would have to go through the entire school district. At this point, we're making it available for teachers to opt in for that subscription on their own on a month to month basis to keep their students incentivized exclusively. So that's been beneficial. You can go straight to our website. You can Google us as well to be able to look at some of the testimonials as, as well as some of our news interviews and news features. So you can check us out and, and really hear what other teachers as well as students are saying about the product. The biggest benefit of the product is the fact that it keeps students engaged with reward based incentives that are outside of the classroom. So being able to get a ticket to a Texas Legends game for our DFW students has been great, as well as getting um, something like an Amazon gift card. We've given out over 500 Amazon gift cards at this point. So it's giving students the opportunity to see something tangible in the short run while they're working on that long-term education. So is it something that, so tell me how, how, how does, how does it work? Like, is it, a, so am I logging into the app? Is it connected to my schoolwork? How exactly is this part of my curriculum as a student? So what this is, is essentially a positive behavior intervention and support. Um, so students actually are the primary engagement on the platform. We have thousands of students using the platform with no other teacher or educator even involved whatsoever. So the student gets their grades. They can take a picture of it. They can upload a PDF and they can also do a screenshot and they upload those grades. It goes through our system. We verify either that report card or that individual assignment and we distribute points to that student. Once that student accumulates the points, they'll have the option to either save their points or they can spend their points on what we have available. The cool thing about saving your points is we're coming with new rewards on a regular basis. So today we might have something that you're kind of interested in, but tomorrow we might have something that's your favorite thing on the market. So, um, you know, keeping students engaged through that new, fresh approach and that new, fresh rewards um, bank to choose from has really been been great for the engagement. Mm, OK, so a lot of times whenever whenever I'm talking to entrepreneurs or I'm at events with entrepreneurs or whatever, they are talking about their the the specific population, you know, the who their who their target audience is who they're trying to sell to, right? So most of the times I have a product, I'm so if I have a book about goals, like my book day one, I have a book about goals. So obviously my target audience is gonna be people that are trying to figure out how to define a goal that maybe wanna start off. Okay, so now whenever we're talking about school economy, you're talking about uh, your target audience, or like you said, those teenagers, which fluctuates because they can have a trend today that teenagers love and then tomorrow they hate it or it's lame or they're <laughs> they don't want anything to do with it tomorrow so how are you guys navigating where your is it your marketing is it what exactly are you doing to make sure that what you're selling is going to stay relevant for this ever-changing population well the biggest thing for us is just communication is everything you know that in any relationship communication is is the paramount 
So what we do is direct to the students, find out exactly what they want, what's hot. We ask them questionnaires. Uh, we send emails. They, we have it open for them to send us emails at any point in time. Anytime that I go and speak to a school, I make it my point to ask students exactly what they want. Another thing is that we have a separate rewards bank, so rewards options for each phase of the education journey. Mm -hmm. So for our younger students, we have things like Chuck E. Cheese. You know, but of course, um, we have things that are scalable across any age group, like the Amazon gift card. Mm -hmm. So smart. Yeah, that's what I was asking because you know <laughs> they are a tough population. <laughs> right. You sound like you know. Yes. Well, I'm just saying, just from being a mom, it's like kids will go for a whole month where they love this potato chip for, you know, they go on hard, hard in the paint for six months for, right. for this potato chip. And then all of a sudden you come back from the store with the potato chip and they're like, "Ugh, why would you get those chips? I hate those. Right. And like, what? <laughs> like, how am I keep up with that? So that's why I was asking about it. Now, yeah. what has been one of the challenges? Because I know as we all are in this entrepreneurial world, you, you, we show the great part. Like they, like you have the, the, you know, you have the promotion banner behind you. Now you have the website, you have all of these things going right. But people don't understand the challenges that came to get to where you are right now. So mm -hmm. give us some of the things that you learned along this process, specifically for school economy. So for school economy exclusively, I would say I've learned more so on the side of, you know, the political side of business. I've been more into that lately. Uh, so, so a lot more entities go into success versus other businesses when, hey, as long as you can do this service over and over again, it's successful. You know, in this space, um, a lot of stakeholders are involved and telling the story is important. So I would say that's the biggest thing, storytelling. And storytelling to different people at different times um, and creating a different vision for all, but being able to um, go toward that vision and pursue that vision, but through one product. But when I'm speaking to Holly Cotton, I'm telling it one way. But then when I tell it to the student that's getting on, it's the same product, but I have to elaborate on the vision in a different way. And then when I speak to an investor, it's a completely different conversation. So it's really showed me that storytelling is the most important part of any business at any level, actually. So. I'm glad you asked that question. That was an amazing question, and that's why you highly caught. <laughs> well, you know, I've been doing some stuff on this. Side. I mean, I didn't get, I didn't have school economy or nothing, but you know, I made it do what it do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, I, I do totally understand, and also, I mean, I know as well because I do a lot of stuff with politicians. I do the elections, but then also even myself with working with school districts and and smaller groups. And I find that it's so much easier to work with those niche groups like boys and girls clubs, and you know, all of those back to school, uh, act, uh, back to school, um, whatever they're called. But the the like the the after school care, before school care, all of those types of things rather than going to the actual school district because it's like all the red tape that you have to go through in order to get something there but then it's like the reverse when you look at like what's going on in florida and texas where they can take stuff out of the school district with no nobody cares about that we're gonna take these books out but to get in is like <laughs> impossible so it's so crazy right now, and Go ahead. I'm glad you brought that up, though. But we'll we'll keep flowing. But go ahead. I'm listening. No, no, no. Go ahead. What you what what you what you got? Oh, I was just speaking on the procurement process and working with schools is is a long process, and I'm glad that you brought that up. That's one of the things that we've dealt with uh, throughout our process, and we actually we get good love in Texas. 
I like Texas. Mm. We get love in New York. Mm. Our biggest love is from New York and Texas. I would say Georgia third. Mm. That's so interesting. Well, like, why is the home state the difficult state? I don't know. I think it's just the Southeast. Mm. It's the Southeast. So have you found that there are other programs similar to yours? Is there any type of competition of someone that's doing it? Or are you guys, do you guys have like this unique niche that no one else is doing this? Um, I would say we were the first to the blue ocean, uh, but some other companies saw what we were doing and, and validated what we were doing with something amazing and, and got into the space too. And I'm excited about that because it is an important space to be in to keep students rewarded and engaged in the classroom. So by any means, if if I'm the thought leader that sends people in that direction, I'm I'm happy to be the first one to make the move. And, and I think we can change the world together. I love that. I love that. Well, that's my hashtag, whole team winning, collaboration over, over competition. So I love For that. Sure. I love that. For sure. now, now, let me ask you this. So... Do you have um, close connections to any of the students that you, because I know, I know when it's your, your, your idea and you're the founder, you sort of throw the idea out there and now you're like, okay, we have to push this. So now I have to focus on the logistics of it. So I may not be close to the consumer as I want to be, but do you have any interactions with any of the students or do you have any feel good story about one of the students that came back to you and were like, oh, Mr. Sanders, I love this. You know, what? this is what I feel, whatever, whatever. Do you have any of those stories? Yeah, I have those all the time. I think it's important for me to be really engaged with my students because of the fact that we're in the digital space. And I'm glad you brought that up is it creates an environment where you can easily get distracted with everything else. And I admit I did get distracted at a certain point, focused on everything but the students. And we took a hit because I was going through the procurement process with the schools and trying to get in the door there and, you know, look up three months. And I haven't been communicating with the students who this is built for. Um, but I also have relationships with students that I've been training in basketball over the years. Um, some feel good stories are things like um, uh, Brandon Ashley out in Macon, Georgia. He always been doing good in school, but this really gave him an extra push in the classroom. He's redeemed a, a, about a hundred dollars in rewards thus far, plays on the basketball team and just went to state playoffs. So that was exciting. Um, also had some students early on before the product released, I would ask them things like, what's the most important thing for you? Why, why would you want to make money from school? And I was hearing things like, hey, I want to help my mom with rent. And I want to help my mom be able to get groceries and things like that. And that's coming from students that are in elementary school. So it was really showing me that we needed to make this happen in a timely fashion. But since then, those students have been able to use the platform and, you know, grabbing a few things from Publix and being able to get an Amazon gift card. We might think it's something small, but it can really go a long way. Oh, definitely. And I think, I mean, just even even parents, that's why if you're co-parenting or you like you always give them that 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 independence to for them to go into the store and buy mom a card for her birthday or, you know, go go pick out a card for your dad or your brother or your grandma or buy something small. So I definitely see that independence. And I think that's important to them to have that, especially whenever they're in that age and they see the struggle that's going on at home and it's like you can't really do anything. So I could definitely see how that's a positive, 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 positive. Um, attribute and they're seeing that. it much so sooner. What I wanted to ask is if I'm doing, say I'm doing a 30 second reel right now and I come to you and I say, okay, we're not, I, you got 25 seconds to tell me about school economy what it is, how it works. Let me hear your spiel of, of how you would take that 30 seconds and basically throw everything, the way it works, the perks, the assets, the liabilities, whatever, throw all of that into 30 seconds and tell me about school economy. On your mark, they said go. Go. 
So my name is Renault Sanders, founder and CEO of School Economy. School Economy is a mobile platform that empowers students to earn gift cards and other rewards for their good grades in the classroom. This also helps for them to have that extra motivation for good attendance as well as positive behavior. We also second as a PBIS platform and tool for teachers to be able to use to gain the power back in the classroom. So this gives teachers an opportunity to send points to students for positive behavior that they want to reinforce within the class. In terms of our enterprise deals, we sell a software to school districts and schools so that those schools can pay for their entire teaching staff to send out points to their entire uh, school enrollment of their students. Okay, that's a very good perk of, of that as well. So, okay, I see why you all wish lobbying on the school district side. <laughs> yep, that, yep. That's actually a good benefit. And, and, and like you said, to have that incentive there, because a lot of times it's just the kids are there and they don't see the big picture yet. They don't see the importance of being a, a, a high, you know, a high learner, being successful at test taking. They, they're just like, listen, I just want to get over the school. I hate it. <laughs> I just, I'm just, right. I, what, what is it? I'm just here so I don't get fired. I'm just here so I don't fail. Like a lot of them have that. So I like that it also makes it fun. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about other things. Cause I know that you have other things that you're doing besides this, or is this your main baby right now? Like what else do you have going on? You broke up at Maine. You broke up when it said, is this your Maine? Oh, it cut off? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, 21. I can hear can you. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. I can hear you. Okay, all right. Okay. Is this your Maine? So, I, I got it. <laughs> so do you have any other projects that you're working on besides School Economy, or is this your main project? I know you said you're an entrepreneur, so do you have any other things that you're working on as well? Um, in this space, we're working through School Economy and becoming multi-product next. So this being the primary product, I'm really focused on this wholeheartedly at this point. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to be coming out with new student success tools, as well as tools for teachers to use in the classroom, too. Um, I would say from what we've done now, the biggest thing that we've created is an environment for companies and corporations to really connect in a fun, fresh way with students, teachers, and parents. So our environment gives them an opportunity to get consumer engagement from our user base and um, let it be an organic connection. It's more organic than the ads that you see on Instagram and TikTok. It really gives them an opportunity to engage with that student and with that parent in a brand new way. And I think nobody has really solved that in the social media space, but we've been able to solve it here in that connecting with Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Oh, is that what they called now? Gen Alpha? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it went back to Alpha. Got it. See, right, thanks that's for keeping me hip. Yeah, thanks for keeping me hip. Cause I was like, okay, so what's after Zeke? <laughs> we deep back in the alpha. game now. I, I'm here. It's like I'm part of school economy. Uh, All right. <laughs> so um, so the last question that I have is that I always try and and pull uh, some some sort of way to inspire and educate other people that or maybe trying to do something similar or that have an idea in their head or maybe someone else like you said you guys have an app you guys are in the school districts you're learning how to collect data you're like you learned how to work with all these people so for anyone that has an idea that they are trying to get into a, a digital genre, I guess you can call it, or anyone that has an idea and they're trying to come up with an app for their idea. Do you have anything that, that you wish that someone had told you at the beginning of your journey? Do you have any advice for those people trying to get into the same area that you are? So the advice that I give to people is something that I actually heard on a video 
from Harvard ID Labs, Harvard Innovation Labs. And the biggest thing is to go ahead and put out a landing page where you can start collecting emails and phone numbers. That's the biggest thing because if you have an idea, you think it's the newest, hottest thing, put a landing page of what your idea is. That'll give you an opportunity to get feedback, start collecting emails, and that email list will give you that validation that you need to spend money on development and spend time on development of that product. Um, I will also say get out of the mindset that you have to keep your product a secret. So a lot of people with innovative ideas come to a point where they say, I don't want anybody to steal it. I want to keep it a secret. In reality, you're doing nothing but holding yourself back because you have to have other people take part in your idea for it to grow and blossom because those are the people that will be able to water it and help you cultivate um, your ideas. So I would say those two things are the biggest. Hmm, that's actually really good advice. I haven't heard that. I mean, I knew knew that in a in a certain, I guess, element. I've heard, I guess, different variations of it, but I've never heard it explained like that. So great advice. Great advice. I love that. I love that. Okay, so drop how people can follow you, find you, subscribe, and what can we all do to support you and School Economy? So you can find us anywhere, uniform, across any social media or Google or the App Store, School Economy, S-C-H-O-O-L-C-O-N-O-M-Y, like school and economy with no E. Um, the most beneficial thing for us is just engagement and enlistment. So if you know any student that's in school, feel free to bring it up to them. Let them know that it's an opportunity for them to use the platform. Any teacher as well that needs to get that control back in the classroom, bring it up to them. I would say the biggest thing for us now is finding the right corporations and companies to align with so that we can really embrace the communities uh, that we're touching and be able to serve more students across the board. So collaborating with corporations is gonna be big for us in, in the next quarter. Right now we have a partnership with Macy's and Linux in Atlanta. And we also have a partnership with the Texas Legends, um, the NBA G League affiliate of the Dallas Mavericks out in Frisco, Texas. So we've really been enjoying the DFW area. So would love to keep on, you know, learning more about these different communities that we're reaching and collaborating with more companies. Uh oh, it froze up. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm gonna edit that out for me. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it record. It says it's recording, but I. I missed like the very last sentence you said, but anyway, okay, no worries. Okay. So you guys, you know that I always have all of that information in the podcast notes. Be sure to scroll down. I always have clickable links as well as social media addresses and website information. So you guys make sure if you know someone that's looking to partner with someone, if you work with a, a children's group, adolescence group, whatever school economy could definitely be something you guys could implement into your program. So be sure to reach out to him. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for bringing me on this forum. I really appreciate it. You've been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.